Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Tom Pierce, and this is The Scale Nerd. Hey guys, welcome back to The Scale Nerd. So our last video, we went over my first clay sculpture project, the character Saru from the Star Trek Discovery series. We sculpted it in Super Sculpey Clay and really had a great time working on that project. I hope that you watched the video. If not, I encourage you to do so. This video though, we're gonna take it to the next step. We wanna bring him to life. So we're gonna go through the painting process of the figure in the base and uh, complete finishing it to a completed project, nameplate and everything. So. I don't want to waste much more time. Let's go ahead and get started on our video of painting the character Saru. Okay, so we're starting out with some Tamiya surface primer in the Wada HPC Eclipse airbrush to prime the figure. So mix up the primer and thinner. Well, one to one, 50-50, and go ahead and shoot it, uh, get a good base coverage of primer across the entire clay sculpture. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay some acrylics on there. I'm using this folk art craft paint. Uh, I use, don't typically use this, uh, but you can use just about any kind of acrylic. Uh, it's this the number 301 True Blue is the color, mixed up with water to about a milky consistency. Uh, to a heavy milk consistency. I could be airbrushing this or paint brushing it on there either way. I just chose to paint brush it on this time. If I was gonna airbrush it, I'd have to run it a little bit thinner, but uh, brushing it on, I can run a little bit thicker. I just uh, wanna make sure that I get a good even coverage and get down in all the nooks and crannies with this first coat. So the first coat isn't quite heavy enough. That's why we put it on kind of thin so we can get into all the little deep crevices, but yet not uh, hide a lot of detail. So I went on ahead and put a second coat on there. And now with the second coat done and, and evenly uh, covering the figure in a base blue, I'm going on ahead and making a slightly darker shade of blue and start kind of pre-shading in where I'm gonna thinking about putting all my shadowing. So I'm not going too deep and too dark in the blue in here, just kind of experimenting my way up through and like I, I call it pre-shading, it's not really pre-shading, but just the first steps of multiple layers of shading that are gonna go into the process. So following the natural intuitive areas that would get shadow, um, go ahead and just kind of start laying that all in with the airbrush. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of sky blue and add it to the 301 True Blue to make a slightly lighter color and do the same thing as I was doing with the shadowing or I'm gonna be doing the highlighting now. So this is just kind of a general um, general highlight area. It's not, not the final complete highlighting and uh, it, it just kind of starting to block areas in and, and just to establish what's gonna be the high areas and the low areas. Uh, we'll be going back in several steps and, and layers to, to tweak this, but this is just the first pass of, of highlighting and shading. Now I go back with the 301 blue and start to try to blend these areas in because the contrast is obviously a little bit uh, 
diffused, uh, the color is desaturated, and it's just uh, a little bit too much. So I start using the 301 Blue base color to go in and just kind of blend the, air, the shading together. And now I'm dry brushing in another highlight tone over the, the high surface areas, especially on the patches on the arm to try to bring out that texture to the arm pads. But I'll go in and, and hit several different areas with this slightly lightened shade of uh, the blue. Next we go a little bit darker than the base blue and start outlining all of the, the fine line details. So along the edges and creases, um, the folds, the cuff, the collar, uh, the zipper line and the jacket, and just all these hard contrast areas. We're going in and outlining them in. Now we'll do the same thing with a lightened shade of the blue, again with a little bit of thrill, or a little bit of sky blue and white. Go ahead and lighten that blue up and start doing this, the, uh, the edge detailing and then gradually work into the folds and the other uh, more prominent highlight areas. Start building up a level of three-dimensional detail. Now as I'm doing this step and doing the highlights, uh, I'm using a very, very thin down, watered down uh, acrylic and do that to gradually feather the highlight areas out, building layer on top of layer of the thinner highlight color. Now I'm taking some acrylic insignia blue uh, to add some more deep, rich blue tone to it and throwing that in the airbrush and this is going to help me to blend the highlights into the shadow areas and add a little bit more uh, vibrance to the color. I go through layer by layer and continue to blend the highlights to the shadows and adjust the saturation of the color in the process. Now that that's all done, I'm going to take some clear satin and seal everything in because the majority of the shading and the coloring of the jacket is done, but it's not completely done. I want to lock in all the work that I've done to this point, and I can be free to go in and add other colors on top without damaging the blue underneath. So now I'm working on the silver trim, the piping on the shoulders and down the side of the, of the uh, jacket, and I'm using just silver acrylic paint to uh, block in all those areas as needed. Now to try to bring out some of the detail, I use a acrylic black wash, which is very thin black, and feed that down into all the details and it will settle down into the crevices and, and be more dense in the deep areas and wipe it off on the high areas. So now we go ahead and start working on the flesh. I begin the flesh with a mahogany color uh, I do that because I like to get a dark base down first, then it fills in all of the crevices and the deep areas so that I'm sure not to have any bright white primer showing through or bright gray primer showing through any gaps that I may have missed in the painting process. So this, this dark color is a foundation that I start with and then move on to the lighter flesh tones and start building my way up to the highlights. Now I want to add a little bit more color, so I take some white and red and uh, mix into the flesh tone to make a little bit more of a rosy flesh color and start blending that in throughout the entire character where it makes sense. It's somewhat highlighting, but it's also adjusting the skin tone in different areas so that it's not all the same color. Now I'm back to the highlighting. I use the brush with very thin down, brighter tones of the flesh in a mottled kind of spattering pattern to gradually layer in 
uh, an organic and less uniform flesh tone in here. So rather than um, just big blotchy areas or big solid areas that I try to layer or step up, I, I do it in a pattern, um, a non-uniform organic pattern that creates some of the blotchiness and the skin pores and texture that you normally would see on uh, flesh. Now I'm using a little piece of organic sponge to do some more bl uh, color blotting into the, onto the skin, to try to create more of a random skin texture, porous pattern, uh, rather than brush stroking on there. And through using different types of sponge and brush and different thin layers of different colors of flesh tone, you just keep building layer upon layer on there that's kind of gives it a depth to the to the skin tone and uh, allows you to kind of gradually subtly shift colors in certain areas and uh, expand on the highlights and shading while you're doing all that so now uh, the next thing is to go in and continue the highlighting uh, getting it to my brightest colors of highlight around the eyebrows and the, and the folds, eye, eyelids, and tips of the ears and the nose and so forth. So getting uh, just about done with this. So you just have to be patient. And sometimes you work forward and backwards as you're doing the shading. You'll go a little bit too far and you have to shade back over it with a darker color or, or go back over a previously shaded area and make it brighter. It's a iterative process, much like sculpting is. So it's not so much a paint by numbers type thing where you know exactly what colors go where and you just put them down. You're gonna massage color, darkness, and highlight and shadow across the entire uh, figure as you see fit. And it's just a, like I said, it's an iterative, iterative process that you uh, kind of make it up as you go along. There's some basic rules of thumb that you can follow but ultimately until you start getting the color down on there you don't know exactly how bright or how saturated or how dark or desaturated you need different areas to be until you start putting them down so now i'm mixing up an off-white color for the eyes uh, don't like to put pure white back in there because it it just makes the eyes look unnatural and then a little bit of, of a mahogany tone around the edges uh, to soften the edges uh, of the eyes. And then we take some uh, bright blue, the sky blue, and lays irises down, uh, and then a little bit of bright, uh, lightened version of the blue, add a little white to it, and start uh, doing some of the, uh, like fleck detail within the iris, and a little bit of dark blue around the very edges of the iris. And then I go in with the black, of course, and add the pupils in. So now we take some clear gloss varnish and add just over the eyeballs themselves and it makes them look nice and wet and realistic. Next step is to take some oil paints and a little liquid which helps to make the oil paint dry a little bit faster. And we'll take uh, these colors that I'm showing here now and add a little bit of liquid to each one of them, just a dab to make them uh, dry faster. I'm mixing up a purplish dark shadow tone. So what, what, why am I doing this? So the idea here is, is as you add more colors to this, uh, to this jacket, the, the blue jacket, it starts coming more to life. So what I mean by that is um, you, you are gonna have shadows that will be a little bit more purple or highlights, it'll be a little bit more green, but these are all variants on the, the base blue tone. 
but it just adds some variation of color throughout the, the blue um, shading process. Otherwise, it just looks unnatural. So adding the additional hues with the oils in there allows you to shift color warmer and cooler across different tonal areas of the jacket in the shadows and in the highlights that kind of simulate different colors of light in the area around him so it's it's light bounce uh, fill light rim light things like that coming off of the off of the uh, jacket and it just makes it look more believable more realistic i've heard it said that doing this will help to give your uh, figure more soul and just make it more believable. Now I also take some oil paints and use that as a uh, glazing and filtering process to go over the flesh tones and do the same thing to just add some different color throughout the skin with this uh, cosmetic sponge allows me to just kind of blot on there in very very thin layers. With that done I go ahead and airbrush everything with clear matte varnish to dull everything down to a flat finish. I take a little bit of rub and buff silver, which is really neat stuff, uh, to go ahead and add uh, some more highlighting and last minute touches to the silver since the flat paint kind of knocked down the, the metallic sheen of the silver, uh, adding the rub and buff back on top of there will bring uh, the peaks of the silver back up and create some nice snap against the blue background. Now we're going to do the communicator badge. Start by painting it with some, uh, just some thin down acrylic silver. Then take a little bit of natural steel and start uh, blending and shading in some shadow areas around the edges and the bottom. This too is just a little iterative process of adding color into the mix of the silver to create uh, reflective highlights and shadow areas and just make it a little less flat, make it a little bit more believable. Now I thinned down some black oil to use as kind of like a wash to go ahead and press down into the detail that I'd scribed into the communicator badge and then just wipe it off. Now again with the cosmetic sponge, take a little bit of that ru silver rub and buff and go over top it as a final touch to really give it a nice snap. Moving on to the base, I'm gonna take some Insignia Blue, thin it down a little bit, and just go ahead and airbrush the entire base that I'd made in the previous video. Uh, just give it a good heavy coat of Insignia Blue paint. I've done a nice heavy coat of clear gloss varnish over top of that, again acrylic from the airbrush. Now I'm gonna take some uh, Frisket masking material and draw me out a circle and cut it out with the X-Acto blade, peel away the frisket, and then with the scissors, I take that and cut out that section of the sheet to make a mask, circular mask that goes around the top level of the base. Now with acrylic flat black, go ahead and uh, paint that entire top surface with a flat black paint. Now with some masking material, I'm gonna go ahead and mask the center out uh, around the edges. Because I wanna add, uh, I wanna take this rib detail that I built onto the base and make it silver. So with the silver rub and buff, uh, I can use the mask, I can apply the silver to the masked off areas. And get a nice clean silver trim around that. Now I designed this name in Adobe Illustrator and sent it out to have it uh, cut out in vinyl by a, a vinyl house. And so just go ahead and peel that off and that gives me a nice little Saru nameplate across the face of the base. And base is done. 
So now we move on to adding five minute epoxy to the bottom of the figure, being sure to get good coverage on there and get a lot of epoxy on the metal armature wires and press it down in there and it's done. So that's it. Saru is complete and uh, let's take a quick look at the finished project. Okay, everyone, so there we go. The project is completely finished now. My Saru character from the Star Trek Discovery series. Our first video, we did the uh, sculpting process. So if you didn't watch the sculpting Saru video, I encourage you to do so. This video, we covered the painting process. So we went all the way from a bar of super sculpty clay to a finished painted and mounted up figurine. So I hope you enjoyed this video uh, or was inspired to either attack clay sculpting yourself or maybe start painting your clay sculptures but again i hope you enjoyed it i thank you for coming and watching i encourage you if you want to see more of my work or more tips and tricks on clay sculpting painting scale modeling diorama building you name it i do a little bit of everything in there if you want to check us out check us out on facebook at the scale nerd facebook page or you can see my YouTube channel on YouTube, The Scale Nerd. Give me some subscribes, likes, and follows, guys. Until the next time, thanks again, and be on the lookout for the next cool project. Safe and happy modeling, everybody. Bye now.